On Tuesday, uh, May 24, 2022, in the United States, in a small town in Texas, a town that almost nobody has ever heard of, Uvalde, an 18-year-old shot his grandmother in the face and then drove to a nearby elementary school, entered a classroom, and shot and killed 19 children ages 9 to 10, along with two teachers. Instantly and unexpectedly, the media was scrambling to uh, find out the horrific details of this event. Politicians began their rhetoric about, we must do something. And people everywhere um, asked the questions, why? How could this happen in America? Why are why innocent children were killed? And above all, the universal question in light of such things and all tragedy and unexpected death, where was God and why didn't he do something? Here's what I think I know, though I try to take the advice of um, the psalmist and not dwell on things that are so profound or upon those things uh, which I'll never comprehend. There's a point when I, and perhaps you, must rest in the truth that there is God. He is made known fully and completely in the person of Jesus Christ. And in Jesus, he is revealed as totally and completely merciful, forgiving, compassionate, and loving. In fact, more than loving, he is love. God is love. In the person, <clears throat> excuse me, of Jesus, God has revealed himself by becoming human and entering fully into our humanity, including our suffering, the suffering of the innocent, dying completely and being buried. And then in the resurrection and ascension and Pentecost, which we just celebrated, Christ not only defeats death and evil, but lives among us and will bring us <clears throat> to himself now and forever. Jesus left heaven and was never separated from the Father. And so Jesus has ascended into heaven and has not left the body of Christ, you and I. Faith proclaims that the Christ who is on the throne is with us and we are with him. And we can proclaim with the scriptures, he will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. Christ was in that room and with those children, and with those teachers. Even as I contemplate this event, I know that there are human beings who in their very core know and will act in the truth that life is greater than death and love is greater than hate. What happened in Uvalde is not about guns, though we might need some gun reform. It is not about security measures, though we may want to look at that as a political issue to protect our children. It is not about mental illness, although we definitely need reform in the care and treatment of the mentally ill as well as the drug addicted. What happened in Uvalde is about evil. And the opposite of evil is not to do good things, that which we automatically want to try to do, although good things are better than bad things. The opposite of evil, if we can comprehend this, is not good, but God. There is a heavenly war between God and evil as manifested in the evil one. Viktor Frankl, who is studied by every uh, psychology student or, uh, and uh, every philosopher, was a survivor of the concentration camps during World War II. And he has a great work on evil titled Man's Search for Meaning. It's worth reading. Another great author is Eli Weissel and his book called Night. Again, looking evil in the eyes and how do we deal with it, knowing God. There are a lot of other books written by men and women who have seen evil and responded. 
some saw redemption in the suffering that evil caused. And I believe that'll be true in Uvalde. One such case is the story of Corey Tenbloom, who survived the concentration camp and gives witness to the presence of God in the midst of the camp, in the midst of evil. There's the great stories about the priest barracks at the Dachau concentration camps just outside of Munich. I was blessed to be able to go there. That's hard to say that you were blessed by going to a former concentration camp. But it was blessed to stand on the spot where that barracks was located and the priests gave witness to the love of Christ. Many of them died in that camp. But the key for me in under, is understanding that it is not a war between good and evil. Again, to get hold of, it is a war between evil and God. Paul says it in a letter to the Ephesians, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and forces of wickedness in the heavenly realms. See, that evil oftentimes becomes flesh by possessing persons. But it is not a battle against flesh and blood. Another book, good book worth reading, I know I'm just referring you to some of these, and I know a lot of you like to read, is a book called The People of the Lie by H. Scott Peck. Fascinating book. The world wants to explain what happened in Uvalde as mental illness or video games or a desensitization of violence in the media or the availability of assault weapons. And we all need, we need to look at those. I'm not putting that down. But what is left out and is of concern to me is other issues, like the destruction of the family and the issue of fatherless. You know, most of the murders are young white males from broken homes or an absence of a father. This young man that committed this horrible, horrific, evil act was a young man living with his grandparents. His parents were divorced, and reports are that his mother and father both had serious drug problems. There's a high incidence of this thing of fatherlessness among gang members, men in prison, and gun violence in the inner cities. This, coupled with the removal of traditional moral values from our culture, I believe has opened the door, opened the door to evil. That evil taking hold of many young adults who are operating without restraint. Young adults who are increasingly, who have no church background or religious involvement, no reference point to determine good from bad. We can address all these issues, and I think we must at some level. And I certainly believe the church bears a burden to preach and to teach, to minister to single mothers and their children, particularly young fatherless men, but also to young fatherless girls. To be clear that there's a strong and ancient moral code that comes from the Judeo-Christian tradition, particularly regarding sexual morals. And as long as we are aborting our children, we are reminded by Mother Teresa of Calcutta that we will understand that our culture, our nation, has lost its soul. What can we do? On that one, vote pro-life, and that's important. But more importantly, it is to be witnesses by living out that pro-life message, that pro-family message, that pro-God, to live out that God is love, to live what we believe, to let people see what Christianity looks out like, and to reach out to those who are hurting and alone. Perfection is not going to come right away, at least I don't think so. But it will come when Christ Jesus returns in glory to establish fully his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Father, let Uvalde um, not fall into the background. Let it not just be a point in history. Let it be something that challenges our souls to understand um, suffering, agony, violence, to see the reality of evil, but in the midst of that, to see that love is greater than hate. Light is more powerful than darkness. Good will come about all that has happened. 
Minister to those who lost loved ones, especially parents. Minister to the students who survived, that they'll be able to go back to school without fear and trembling. Lord, minister to the, the pastors and the priests um, as they go through the funerals of these little children and these teachers. Lord, let them be light to the Evaldi community. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.